Alright, 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 guys. We've got Beyond the Man That Never Sleeps. Once again, trying to win three tournaments in a row. I'm not sure how he did in the other two, but this is the third one. <laughs> He's playing Australia at the bottom left. It's the finals of the Pigasaur Weekly. Uh, $400 American Replacement Cup, while the ESL Weekly is out of action. And Beyond apparently stayed up to play the Warty Monday tournament that has replaced the Korean version of this. He also then stayed up to play the Kolaris Roddy Steadfast tournament, which, by the way, for those who don't know, starts at, I think it's like 1 a.m. Korean Standard Time? That's when it starts. And then he's like, well, since that finishes at like 5, 6, 7, might as well just stay awake for another four hours and then play this one. At, uh, I think we started at 11 my time, which was that, like 9, 9 a.m. Korean Standard Time. So we're right now, it is about 1 p.m. Korean Standard Time. And Beyond is just in the finals, clean sweeps Shin, friggin' wrecks everybody's face, and rocks up to the finals. Now, the reason I'm not the biggest fan of this is he got destroyed last week in the finals, like super one-sidedly, and it looked like he played like a donkey. He just didn't play good. He looked tired. He, I mean, it just, it, there's no other way to say it. There was odd, kind of weird, uncharacteristic mistakes. And I'm hoping he's like in better form today. So I hope he's got that Red Bull, that coffee, whatever it is. Maybe his puppy's there licking his toes to keep him awake. Uh, <laughs> whatever it needs to make sure he plays a clean game. Now, it is Crimson Court Game 1. Australia has just got through two very grueling series. Very late game PvP. Very late game PvZ. And uh, he's, he's going to be a little kind of mentally tired, I think, after those games. Because those were not easy games. They were intense and they were weird. You guys saying, weird? I mean, I don't know. I figure, like, how could a puppy... Because people were saying, oh, he's got his puppy, man with dog. Yay, yay, yay. I was like, I don't know. How's a puppy going to help you stay awake? I was kind of just riffing off Twitch chat there. I was like, I guess it could lick his toe or something. I don't know. I, I, I Maybe it just barks at him whenever he falls asleep. Like, you know, like when you're driving and then, like, if you fall, start falling asleep, you get someone with you to be like, oi, don't drive off the road. Good Reaper surround, uh, probe surround on the Reaper. Stalker cleans it up. Okay, two probes. Did you get the Hellion as well? Only two probes for two Reapers and a Hellion. Great start to the defense for Australia. That was legendary. That was really well done. Medivac's on the way. Marines coming. Factory building a tech lab. So we've got a standard Widow Mine drop follow-up. Nothing too crazy from Beyond. And I think Australia seeing the tech lab on the factory. Seeing that Medivac pick up. Happy to see this. He's like, which way are you going, bro? Are you, are you coming to my base, are you? And of course, he goes forward to intercept it. Any hits you get on this Medivac really weakens this. And Beyond has to immediately change directions. I like the split on the units here, but notice Beyond tries to... Yeah, he thought Australia would run further to the sides and he could maybe go through the middle, but Australia split his units perfectly. And that buys him a lot of time. He can now pull back. You don't want to stay on the map too long. This already delays the drop a long time, which means the delay on your mining time, anything like that is just pushed back. Now, there was a slight supply block there for Australia, but only slight. He's got a very quick uh, third base up, so he's feeling pretty good. Three stalks in a sentry, solid. And two mines, and that's going to come in. Oh, two probes. No, nope, good retargeting there by Beyond. And he does take out a single Widow my, uh, probe. Oh, okay, there is a hole between the Twilight Council. Good move. But probe is going to take that. And Beyond not unburrowing and reburrowing there. I thought he'd be able to do that in time. Does pick up and boost out of there. Widow mine on the left side, desperately trying to escape. He's like, let me, let me recharge. Give me a second. Just give me a second, please. The Stalker, though, not going to give you time. Only needs two hits to get you, and I'm pretty sure it can get two shots off before you can burrow. Uh, be funny if Australia doesn't quite catch it, but he does. Good chase, good chase. Second Hallucinated Phoenix is coming forward. We're going to see a very standard setup here for Beyond. He's got an Engineering Bay, a third gas, second and third barracks. Two Siege Tanks for safety in case there was a Blink counterattack, which, of course, we know there is Blink on the map, but with only two gateways... Robo, four gases. This is the macro build. This is Australia's favorite. It's this classic macro build, guys. So it's both a fast third of the handful of stalkers with blink into fast colossus. Robo Bay should already be down. But it's not. It's going four gate before Robo Bay. This is not usually how Australia plays this build, especially not with fast gas. Oh, he's playing Storm Drop. Okay. He's going to play Storm Drop instead of Colossus. Cool. I like it. I like it. Dogs won't won't do that. They won't lick your toes and they won't uh, bark at you to stay awake, but they will shove their head under your mouse arm over and over again while yelling at you and over and over again. <laughs> this sounds like a personal story from chat. 
A mine running from a stalker. For, for some reason is really cute. The mine is trying so hard with its little legs. Oh, I thought we were going to make a joke about how the stalkers normally are the people running towards the other one. But then no, it makes sense for a stalker to be chasing someone, right? But normally the person doesn't know they're being chased, I guess. Or being watched by... Them. Anyways, that's... We don't need to go too far down that line. Fire drop on the left side. No stim ready just yet. Gonna get himself like a probe, clear up a pylon or two and see what he can do. Storm drop with high ping is gonna do wonders. Well, yeah, it, it definitely is harder to play against. I would say the techniques the pros use against Storm really make it look amazing, right? If you look at Clem and Beyond, they refuse to pre-split versus Storm. They always wanna wait for you to throw the Storm and then spread, which when you're early game, you're very marine heavy, is incredibly vulnerable. That being said, the Storm is super late, guys. He's only on five gateways with no storm ready. Oh gosh. He has to maybe make an arc on here. And his pylon's so exposed. Oh, Estrella. Estrella, if he loses that pylon, he's screwed. Oh, okay. Luckily, Beyond didn't know that. Oh my god, the Widow Mine. First Widow Mine hit was big. High Templar, only one left right now. Oh no. I think Estrella forgot to start Psy Storm, guys. That being said, he does have an Immortal in there. If the Immortal can get on the tanks, maybe, but no. Estrella just being way too greedy this game kind of defending really well it looked really nice and then he just kind of uh keeled over and died a little bit there we got to check when did that storm start i feel like that templar archives wasn't the earliest but it still felt like should have been able to have it maybe mm, pretty late 545 for the templar archives is very late guys and you can see there was a bunch of downtime where he forgot to start it all right, guys, we've got Beyond in the top left side of the map, Australia in the bottom right. Australia went for a nice early scout. Now, chat's saying, is he going to do the site delta build? No. Beyond never does the site delta build on site delta. He now does it on every other map, pretty much every second game, and he doesn't do it on site delta anymore. So, yeah. Um, it, this is the change up, guys. If he was going to do it, he'd be pulling off gas right now to build a third command center. He'd also normally build his command center on location, but it's going to go. Commands are on the high ground. Marine into factory. Looks like a nice quick reactor. What's the site delta build? Uh, it's a 3cc into 3 barracks. So 3 command centers into 3 barracks. It's build Beyond did every game on this map for like 3 months, including at the World Championship. And every time the Protoss player was like, What? There's a third command center here? Wow, who would have thought? And I was like, Guys, he does this every game. I, I, I cast a lot of Beyond. So Beyond's a very predictable player. Like, incredibly predictable. Um, but he, he's got such good execution, it doesn't really matter that much. Like he's able to somewhat get away with it, but I, as someone who casts a lot of his games, because I cast so many weekly cups, I get very frustrated, because I'm like, how is no one ready for it? And then I realize, like, I cast Beyond so often, it makes sense for me to know all this. A lot of the players haven't necessarily played him in every single weekly cup every single week, right? So they don't actually see the same build get repeated so often, and unless they've got a big match in, like, GSL, which they're preparing for, where they'd actually watch all those videos... That, you know, a lot of tournaments like weekend format, you don't really have time to look through all of their videos. And uh, sometimes you just give your opponent the benefit of the doubt. And you say, I know he does that a lot, but he wouldn't do that here in a big tournament. And it's beyond, so he just does the same build like three times in a row. And you're like, oh, I should have counted it. Oh, no. Sometimes you overthink it, you know? So if your opponent just keeps doing something, sometimes you don't have to be like, oh, but if I counter it and he swaps the build, it'll be bad. Like, that's overthinking. It's like, no, 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 just, just do the counter get ahead profit this is going to be a nice fast double cyclone drop by the looks of it blink is of course very good against it it's three gate blink as well for australia a very solid setup hopefully australia can get his feet back underneath him after a uh, stressful last few games the adept will get out of that but only barely oh he's gone for the seven marine drop actually oh so the cyclones are just going to join up on the front are they Two adepts, two stalkers should be enough to defend this. If he has a battery. He doesn't have a battery, actually. Oh. This is going to get weird because Estrella's moving out. He's kind of looking for the drop. Okay, he sees it now. Oh, he sees the cyclone. Though. This is good for Estrella. Yeah, trading a stalker for a cyclone is good, and he doesn't even lose the stalker. Drops over there as well. Blink will be ready soon. Oh, this is where stuff gets weird. He just took a lot more damage than he should have. He does take quite a bit of stalker micro. Uh, stalker damage, I should say. Gets both Cyclones, but now the drop's coming deep. That being said, three Stalkers ready for it. You don't want to take too much damage on this Medivac. Beyond going a bit too deep. You gotta run away now. You do not want to unload in this base. Oh my god, it's such a dump. So silly. Blink could be ready, Beyond. Why would you take that risk? 
I think even Estrella couldn't believe it. His stalkers weren't even moving in that direction because he assumed the medevac would fly away. Only a crazy person would fly into the base. Remember, Bjorn hasn't slept all night and he normally plays psychotically aggressive. So, <laughs> fair call. He doesn't lose the medevac. It's fine. He lost one Marine. You know, yeah, we just, it's, it's like one or two Marines. It's not a big deal. It's, it's fine. Raven's there. Uh, Australia plays for uh, Virtus Pro, right, guys? Beyond for Shopify Rebellion. You guys can tell me if that contract with Virtus Pro is still going. I imagine it would have been a year-long contract. Oh, SK is in South Korea. I thought you meant Team SK. Be of course SK Telecom, SKT. Oh, Stim. Oh. Oh, this is why are you making Stim here? Beyond making a bit of a questionable decision with his his building placement. I gotta be honest, guys. Not not the favorite placement I've ever seen from Beyond. He's gonna shade two adepts in here. Is Mr. Mr. Australia. Maybe get himself just one or two SCVs. Eh, gets an SCV and a marine for two adepts. Oh, not doesn't even get the second one. Raven. Raven comes in, does take a bit of damage of the damage. Ooh, and it's exposed. Could take a bit more. Stalker's still poking at the front. Australia realizing there is free pickings here. Good micro. Gets himself a few marines. Pulls back. Raven comes in. Gets itself a pro, but he throws the Raven away with an F2. Oh, Bion. With a little bit of a mistake there. Third command center does start in the main. This feels like a good position for Australia, though. Even though there are even workers right now, similar supply. I feel like with a forge, Robo Bay, charge on the way. You're rounding out your tech. You're also going to five gateways. You've already got most of your way towards your full two base production, right? Like Australia is not, it's not like he's sitting on two gates and he's like, oh, I have no production. So he can also probe his third up, but he's kind of stopped probing now. Getting very good trades though. Wow. Gets himself yet another Marine. Units lost up. Very bad for pro, uh, Terran. A Medivac, two Cyclones, an SCV, 13 Marines and a Raven for two Adepts and two Stalkers. Australia's laughing right now. Laughing his way to that Protoss bank, enjoying that. Even mining time and two more workers in the main base go down. He's all over this, guys. He's not on Verda, says Trigger. Oh, really? Is Australia on a team right now, or is he teamless? Didn't he represent Virtus for uh, EWC? Doesn't that only apply? Like, what? I thought EWC was like only, would only apply points and things if you actually had like proper contracts. Can't, they sign it for like a one month contract just during EWC or something? That's crazy. Alright, third Nexus over there. Stalkers rotating around, Marine Marauder doing what they can. We are not on the balance test just yet, guys. We'll be casting some games off that after the tournament finals is over today. Oh, this is classic PVT on site Delta. Look at this map vision for Australia, guys. Guys, anyone remember when I was coaching Australia for PVT, which is more of a brainstorming session than actual coaching many years ago? And I was like, you need to build pylons on the edges more. This is really important in this matchup. And he was like, yeah, I think so. And it's so funny because, like, I feel like there's a few people that did that back then. It was pretty good. But it feels like on a map, like, I think the maps were small. Maybe they were more narrow. These maps are so, so wide. I think it's the wideness of these maps that makes it like, it's not just, it used to be good and now it's essential, right? It, it's like, it's so necessary to have that vision everywhere. Terrans are also just very in the face of the Protoss players these days. Up in, up in front of them. I think back in that period, there was a lot more like 1-1 one, one bio ghost Viking all-ins. Big three base timings and stuff like that was more of the matter. A bit different these days. The pylon buff made it essential as well. That's true. Pylons have one extra sight range. Good point from Trigger in the chat. The pylons actually have insane vision. If you look at it, I'm like, that's like an overlord vision, man. Yeah, they gave them glasses. They took them to the optometrist. Fourth base, fifth base on the way. All on four gas here. Pretty standard to play four gas. You can get enough tech units off four gas to give some oomph to your army. While having most of your money go towards building 47 gateways. And a mass of zealots, which are, of course, your core unit. Oh, ow, ow. 
Ow. Couple zealots going down. That marine does get sliced and diced, quite literally. Oh my gosh. Ah, brutal, dude. All right, marine mortar tanks coming out. Vikings as well. Second starport hanging out. Apparently triggered 2 0 beyond on Sunday. Oh, really? What tournament was that? Send me those replays, Trigger. Okay, this is this is going to be an interesting scenario because as much as Beyond was on the back foot, if he can avoid fighting for a minute, that would be good. If he, if he, if he, oh, this is the time. Australia normally has a big problem with finishing games, but he's not having that problem now. He dives. Great disruptor shot. I know it's hard to see, but he got a lot of the bio on the retreat there. The disruptor moves into melee combat. He just wants to be one of the boys. Just wants to. He's like, give me some lightsabers. Let me be a zealot. I always wanted to be a zealot. Uh oh, Vikings getting the Colossus. Eh, one Colossus will fall, but the other one will survive. Stalkers take out all the Vikings. Bjorn needed another 30, 45 seconds, maybe a minute. And then when he maxed out, he might have been able to hang on. This is the very rare game where Estrella just decisively finishes the game with an advantage. Good on him. All right, we got a series at our hand, ladies and gentlemen. We got Bjorn in the bottom left side, Estrella in the top right. It's post youth. A map where Protoss always gets destroyed in this backdoor base. Which is why I kind of like when I see a Protoss just be greedy and just take the gold straight away. And just like be like, whatever, let's see if I can get away with this, you know. And it's like, hey, if you drop this back base, there's not actually a base there. Now what's kind of cool though, um, is Beyond doesn't scout. So Beyond, even if you go gold base, might not realize you've gone gold base for quite a while. Am I partially British? Uh, yeah, my mum's great, great, great grandparents uh, stole some bread and uh, they got put on a boat and sent to this island. So yeah, I actually don't know. My, my mum's side is so white trash that I assume they came from convicts. We don't know though. I don't know how a family tree works in that regard. My dad's side is Germanic, and yes, I live in Australia. So I'm not British, but uh, if I want to sound really smart, I'll be like, well, guys, as you can see, and like, uh, I can't even do it on demand, but I'll do it like subconsciously. If I want to sound like I'm saying something that has like a lot of weight to it, I'll put a bit of a British accent on, put on some S. Because if you sound British, Americans have this thing where they think British people are smart. Because they have this dumb idea that like British like wear tweed suits and like hang out in Oxford. They don't realize most of them are smashing beer bottles on the street and fighting over the results of football matches. But uh, you know, I, I lean into it. A lot of my audience is American. And I realize that they don't realize that I'm actually an idiot even when I am putting on a British accent. So it's part of my whole thing. The illusion, some would say. I, I did that for the British. You see, that was I was... That was kind of a double bit, calling it calling it football, because we call it soccer in Australia as well. You know, like it was it was kind of like a yeah, it was a little little double bit. Now now Bjorn did pull off gas there, guys, but he didn't actually start the third. There we go. So Bjorn is doing the site delta build that we expected earlier. It's coming out now. Told you he does this, he does this all the time on not site delta maps now. He heard my criticism that he was doing the same build too much, so he changed the map that he does it on. <laughs> to predictably now never do this build on site delta and always do it on other maps but to be fair at least we don't know which ones of the other maps he's going to do it on so you just know that he's not going to do it on site delta anymore second rack's coming up you'd be surprised to see a third barracks. i think when you play as much as beyond that's probably your biggest weakness is you fall into like so many habits he's going two racks ebay oh he's not even going to go for the third racks until after is he going to go factory as well this might be one of those, like, Gumiho special builds. This build gets ravaged by 4-gate blink, but Australia doesn't 4-gate blink very often. He's not very good at it. Your best accent is Russian? Yes, very nice. I know, I speak Russian very well. Yeah, I know, guys. What can I say? People have said I'm a master of accents. They, they said I should work on something called Saturday Night Live. I don't know. Don't know what that is. 
But uh, I thought I, 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 I've practiced that one a lot. That's a perfect, uh, perfect Russian accent. I agree. You guys want to hear another one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You guys name name the region in chat. I'll show you. Like we're talking not just regional dialects. I will get it down to the postcode. Like the way I speak, postcode. Like down to the postcode. Just Egypt. Okay, Egypt. Let me just let me just get in the, get in the mode. You think camel sand pyramids. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nile River, all right, Ibises, Anubis, all right. Let me go. Oh, hello. I am from Egypt. Welcome to my country. That was perfect, right, guys? Yeah? No? <laughs> what? That was, that was, you guys have never, this is how I know my chat isn't well-traveled. You guys have never been to Egypt, have you? You guys have never been to Egypt. <laughs> I knew you were guys were putting on airs pretending to be well traveled when you're not. Oh, you guys are so. <laughs> Another stalker goes down for Australia there. He's got the force field ready for the ramp, guys. Uh, no, you only get two accents, guys. Monkey, monkey only dances so much. Especially when they're that perfect. I think they're worth more than two, so. <laughs> Australia's got a little contain here because he knows the factory's really late. So he can basically keep him trapped from moving out with Stim. Because otherwise, Bion could have moved out, moved across the map and be stimming into your third right now, which is really hard to defend. So instead, he has to wait for Medivacs before he can move out. The thing is for Australia, do you know how fast this factory is? Because this is pretty fast Medivacs, considering he's gone third command center into this. Oh, watch, 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 be Australia, 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 Australia. You got to force field this. He misses the force field, but he has a second one, thankfully. Be I love the way that Beyond, just before Medivax comes out, he can't wait, so he stims down the ramp, hoping that Australia's not looking. That is the most Beyond move I've ever seen. I watched a lot of Anthony Bourdain, that's not Egyptian. He only went to the nice parts. If you come to the real parts of Egypt where, like, normal people live, none of that fancy tourist stuff that Bourdain went to, you'll see what it's really like. Guys, he just lost two more stalkers, didn't even get a Marauder kill. This is not a good start for Australia. He doesn't even have a battery up yet. Uh-oh, I think Australia got a bit too fancy. He doesn't quite have the finesse right now. Beyond stimming down the ramp like it's 2010 and floating directly to the gold base. Beyond zero fear and zero respect. Australia is so focused on securing his own gold base. I, I worry that he might just die. Oh, and here comes the shovey shove. Okay, he sees that he's picked up. Australia knows what's happening. He's got stalkers in position. You might want to hold these stalkers back and trap him. Oh, oh no, he blinks down. That's a terrible movie. He, he realizes he screwed up and he recalls. He only loses one stalker. Could be worse, I guess. Oh my God. Australia's uh, being a little bit too fancy in this game, I got to say, guys. He needs a battery on this base as well. No battery on this base is, is really problematic. Remember I told you guys, this base is where the back door. This is where you get destroyed every single time playing against Terran on this map. That Marauder does go down. Nice Colossus shot from the high ground. Does he have a Colossus on the right side? He does. He needs a third Colossus. He needs it sooner rather than later. Bion's going to pull back now, taking advantage of his gold base advantage. And the fact that Australia has been bullied off the gold is really hurting him. You really need to, to get the numbers out to go out there and bully Terran off the map. Australia's never getting that chance. And as a result, I think it's so hard for him to even hang on. He cancels the gold, pulls back from it. He needs pylons. Pylon does finish, unsupply blocking him, but man, uh, look at this. Beyond builds a fourth on location. He starts Vikings. Now, this is actually cool. The fact that Beyond's building Vikings right now after just six medevacs, I mean, he can't be too wasteful with throwing drops away, but I think he's just in a, a fantastic position. Now, Zealot counterattacks probably should have been happening a little bit earlier. Another cancel on the gold. Oh, man, but Australia finds the gold of Beyond. He's going to get himself at least a few SCVs and does get himself. Ooh, that was the second starport. There's a Ghost Academy. Ah, cancels the Ghost Academy as well. So let's get the SCV building the fourth base. Australia's fourth base needs to start building. Otherwise, he's going to be kind of all in. He's only got two Colossus and no Warp Prism, guys. Oh, but he's on the high ground. Nice positioning for Australia. Australia's not really thinking about a fourth base right now. I think he needs to start that. Remember, he's only got plus one attack. No second upgrade on the way. Oh, and here comes Beyond. Beyond's ready to fight. Colossus need to get out of there. The Colossus and the Stork is just not enough of them. And Beyond just man modes it. And I, I made fun of Beyond for being too predictable with this build order. Beyond says, who cares? If I win the game, I win the game. It doesn't matter if I'm predictable. I just win. I win, win, win. I don't know how to do anything else. I'm like Charlie Sheen with a freaking eight ball, mate. I'm by winning. I'm Beyond winning. 
Got a prism down there. We got Zealots on that right side, warping in. Zealot Arc on Stalker here. Strayer feels like he's got to win right now. He's going to just go for a YOLO. Comes in from the Zealots from the right, Army from the left, but I don't think it's quite the surround that he's looking for. And, and Beyond just has so much money coming in. His five barracks pumping, his factory and starport pumping. As long as he gets rid of this part of the army, it is game over in his favor. Denied the fourth too many times. Australia just unable to do well against Beyond on this map. Last time he, he would played Beyond on this map in a big tournament was EWC. He was miles ahead and he threw that game. He got his army surrounded and absolutely destroyed. And now, since then, he's lost basically to this build every time he's played against Beyond on it. Beyond knows he's doing this. Australia knows that Beyond's going to do this build every time they play. And he just can't beat it on this map. He needs to find a greedier build order of his own. And I think that just means countering him with like a blind gold base or something. Dude, I love that he's gone sentries, but that Widow Mine was kind of brutal. Strayer trying to force it with Stalker Sentry. And that's always a desperate spot to be in. He's going to try and bait the Widow Mine, but nice on Burrow Micro for Beyond. Australia does focus it down before it can reborrow. But Landed Vikings are actually going to beat him. And you know when you're losing to Landed Vikings... It's a bad feeling, mate. It's a bad feeling. It's a bad feeling. Is he getting sniped? Dude, he just sniped a zealot. Okay, Beyond, stop. That's rude. That's really rude, Beyond. You don't need to style on, on him like that. What the hell, man? Stalker's gonna go for the Widow Mine. Okay, here we go. Ghost going to that side as well. I hope you guys clipped the Egyptian accent, by the way. Send that to Magna, our uh, GM, GM Egyptian commentator. <laughs> I'm sure he'll appreciate it. He's going to be like, is that what I sound like, pig? And I'm like, exactly. I know, you've just never heard yourself recorded, even though you commentate StarCraft. You've never, no, you definitely don't realize what you sound like. <laughs> Uh, dude, Australia's doing a decent job of hanging on. He's got a gold base up, but it just feels like, you know, beyond has got so much oomph behind this. Look at that. Starport coming up. Fourth base orbital. So he's got unlimited money. Zealot coming in for a nice little surround. Zealot Stalker. But the Stalkers just disappeared. The Marauders way too hard. Oh! Oh! Just no units for Australia. We're watching him micro. This is so Australia, isn't it? Like, he died two minutes ago, but then he just decides to micro like a god. When Estrella's losing, he becomes such a freaking god tier player. It's crazy. Beyond, though, is up two to one. All right, guys. Beyond in the top left side. Barracks gas opening on Oceanborn. Estrella in the bottom right side. Going for the gateway. Ready to wall off the jumpy ledge. I... Wait, what? Oh. Oh, Beyond. Beyond's trying to speedrun it. Beyond always does this when he's tired, guys. He just starts doing some crazy all-ins. This is going to be a Marauder proxy. So Marauder's from there and Marine's from home. He's going to try and walk three Marines out from here uh, and join them with two Marauders. And he's going to try and kill Estrella. The, the, you might be thinking, well, isn't it obvious that he's proxying? No. Unless Estrella counts SCVs and realizes there's missing, or he realizes that the Orbital Command doesn't start. Because normally... Wait, he's making an orbital? Well, that makes it blatantly obvious what he's doing. I guess because he goes high ground command center quite a lot. The thing is, at 145, there should be a command center down. So at this point, you got to go, okay, I was blocking it. Fair enough. But now you got to say, okay, do I think there's a command center on the high ground? Because he didn't really get to look up that high ground at all. He might just assume that it's on the high ground. Oh my god, that's why you, you don't even need to fake. You used to have to build the command center to sell the story on this, but because Terran players go high ground command center so much in the current meta, Beyond's like, whatever, I can still afford an orbital. All I need to do is cut a bit of SCV production to have the money to keep up Marauders. To be fair, his third marine is a little bit slower than normal, but dude, what a dirty build. I, I feel like I want to shout to Australia right now. I'm like, Australia. Shield batteries. No! No! He's doing a three-minute third build. Well, guys, once again, Beyond staying up for three tournaments in a row ruins the finals. We have one or two epic games, and then it just ends. It's just over. It's game over. There's nothing. I, I want to hype this up. I can't. Estrella's doing a slightly gambly build against normal builds. This is a little bit of a gamble. Against this build, it is not just a gamble. It is a, I lose the game unless my probes surround your entire army at the very start of this fight, which is not going to happen because your stalker's on the wrong side of the map. Oh man, he's chronoing probes right now. His sentry's going to die as the very first thing that happens. This is a disaster. Oh man. 
245 third against a one base all in, and the pylon's out on the left, which means your battery doesn't even cover the main. What an anticlimactic way for it to finish. Bion, we have a problem. Can we talk about this problem in StarCraft for one minute, guys? Its name is Bion. And he is not giving his all. He's staying up all night to play three online tournaments in a row. And this is a big, disgusting problem. And do you know why? Because he's still good enough to beat everyone. He stays up for freaking 36 hours, plays better than everybody, and still wins the tournament in the most one-sided fashion ever. What a legend. Beyond's, okay, Beyond's actually a freak. Uh, who else was in this tournament? Australia, Dark, Shin. Think about all the insane players he beat, and he just crushes the finals like that. Beyond is a freak. GG, well played. I was joking about it being a problem. He's just a freak, guys. Beyond is an absolute monster right now. GG, well played.